Hey there, in the previous video I've showed you how you can achieve runtime polymorphic behavior in codices using an interface. My interface area uh, was implemented in the two function blocks, the function block ellipse and the function block rectangle, so we can have a common use. In the common use we achieved over the function area. If you have missed that video, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below so you can go ahead and watch it. In today's video, I'm gonna use inheritance to achieve the same runtime polymorphic behavior. So first of all, the capability of a class to derive properties and characteristics from another class is called inheritance. So the class that inherit properties from another class is called subclass or derived class or child class and the class whose properties are inherited is called a superclass or base class or a parent class for my parent class i'm going to create function block shape and this is going to be an abstract function block abstract means that sometimes uh, not all the implementation of the functions can be provided so this is only an absolute interface. We don't have any implementation. We only have declaration because let's say we don't know what kind of shape uh, do we have. Now I'm gonna create a method. This method will be called area as in the previous video, as you can remember. This method will be returning a string. So I can just type something as a result to show you. I'm gonna declare this method as an abstract as well because this method is again only declaration but no implementation. This method must be overwritten from the child classes, from the classes that are inheriting in inheriting the, uh, the function block shape. Uh, to show you the difference, I'm gonna create a, a method type which will return a string, but this method will not be abstract. So when I have such a method, this method is also an interface but with the default implementation. For my default implementation, I'm gonna just type, let's say, I'm a shape, because this is true for all the derived classes. And this is true because in the public inheritance, we have a special bond between the parent and the child class, the so-called is a relationship, because everything that applies to the base class object also applies to the child class object, because every child class object is a base class object so let's say every triangle is a shape every rectangle is a shape every ellipse is a shape but the other way around let's say every triangle uh, every shape is a triangle that's not true as in the previous video i'm gonna create two public properties argument one and argument two because as you can remember the area of the shapes, let's say the ellipse and the re uh, rectangle, needed only two arguments or two properties that are multiplied with each other. Now, I already cre I've already created my first property. Now I'm gonna create my second property, which is gonna be an argument two, and I'm gonna create the get and set methods. Again, if you missed that video, just go ahead and watch it, and it's gonna be hopefully clear what the properties uh, are doing. Now, I'm gonna declare two local variables for my arguments. Everything is happening in my base class, as you can see that. Let me just declare the argument one, which is from type Rio, of course. And I'm gonna declare the argument two, which is from type Rio as, as well. Now, as you may remember, in the previous video, I've used a result variable in my methods that to calculate the area. The result variable was just a buffer. Now I'm gonna declare this variable in my base class as well. I'm gonna use a property to write to the variable, but this property is gonna have an access specifier protected. That means that only the classes that are inheriting the function block shape can access this property. So the other two, argument one and argument two, are public properties and they can be accessed from everywhere. So I can access them from a function, I can access them from a, a program, it doesn't matter. 
but this property property result can only be accessed from the child classes of the function block shape so not outside the function block now i'm gonna use inheritance as i said to create my runtime polymorphic behavior as you can see i'm declaring function block ellipse one and this function block ellipse one is going to extend the function block shape that means that i'm inheriting the function block shape and all the public functions and um, properties that the function block has as you can see now when i'm declaring the method area it's already existing so i cannot change the return value or something like that that means as i said i have only an interface i don't have a default implementation so let me override this method i'm just gonna copy the function from previous time so i don't need to type it again uh, this is just the algorithm to calculate the area from the ellipse and i'm gonna create a second function block which is gonna be the function block rectangle and this function block is gonna extend again the function block shape i'm inheriting this function block now i'm gonna create the method area as well because this method again is only an interface i definitely need to override it if i want to use it in the function block to show you the difference i'm gonna check the property here again to show you this I'm just gonna override the method type in my rectangle and I'm gonna leave the method type in the ellipse as it was now as you can see I'm calling the method type here and I can just type uh, I am a rectangle let's say it like this for the function block ellipse I'm not overriding this method so I'm gonna use the default implementation uh, default implementation and this was I am a tape uh, type now as in the previous video I'm just gonna create a function that it's gonna invoke my interface let's call this function area shape because I already have the old function uh, shape from the previous video this function will return a string now the results gonna be equal to the uh, result of the method of the function block shape because I want to invoke the interface I need a reference to the function block shape as I said this function block cannot have a instance of it but I can have a reference to it or a pointer to it it doesn't really matter how you're gonna call um, the interface but uh, you can have a pointer you can have an, um, a reference but if we have a pointer you need to dereference it and check for a zero pointer and when you have a reference that's not the case now as I said my result of the function will be uh, equal to the result of the method area as in the previous video this method will invoke the correct method area over the interface the only difference uh, in this video is that the uh, interface is a function block shape that is an abstract class. Now I can call my argument one, but first you can see that I cannot access the property result. This is because as I said, this is a protected property. Only the child and the base class can access this property. Now let me type the argument one and argument two so I'm gonna write to those properties and this function will invoke the correct function block and the correct method and it's gonna write to the correct properties now I've created a area um, an array of strings that it's gonna return my result or I'm gonna have my result there now I'm gonna call the function area shape and for this function i need two function blocks let's say function block ellipse one and function block rectangle one that are from type function block ellipse one and function block rectangle one as in the is in the previous video i'm just gonna pass the whole function block to the function because we have a reference to the base class and as we said it before 
every child class is a base class when we have a public inheritance. Now, let me log in to show you the result. When I toggle the bit for the area ellipse, I'm going to invoke the interface. The previous result was the area of the ellipse is 47.1. And as you can see for today's video, the area of the ellipse one is 47.1. So the interface is invoking the correct method. Here again, the area of the rectangle one is 15. I can change the values just to show you the difference and that everything is correct. I'm just going to log in without changes and I'm going to toggle the bits again. Now you can see the area of the ellipse one is 471 and the area of the rectangle is 175. The properties have written to the encapsulated data and everything is correct. Now I have told you that when we have an abstract method, that means that we have an interface. And this abstract method must be overridden from the child classes if we want to use it. But when we have a normal method, this means that we have a default implementation. And to show you that, to show you the difference, I have uh, overridden the method type in my rectangle one and just and now I'm gonna call the original method type in the ellipse. So this is only to show you the difference. Now I'm gonna invoke in this function f type, I'm gonna invoke the method type for both function blocks. Now I'm just gonna use the same toggle bits in the same result variables to show you that and it doesn't really matter. So here I'm just going to pass the whole function block ellipse again and I'm going to have a function type. And again for the rectangle I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to pass the rectangle. Now because we didn't overridden uh, the, uh, the method type in the ellipse we're going to receive the default implementation. So the ellipse will say I am from type shape because we're going to invoke the default implementation that we have inherited. And again, the function block rectangle has overridden this uh, method. So I'm going to receive the result I am from type rectangle. And you can see those results. I am a shape. I am from type rectangle because I have overridden the default implementation of the function block. So guys, Thank you for watching and if you have some questions don't hesitate to contact me and have a good one.